after the United States dropped two A-bombs on mainland Japan, they weren't really sure what to do with these new munitions that they had. So the first thing that they did is throw it inside of a cannon, call it Atomic Annie. It's a thing of beauty. Not fully satisfied with how far Uncle Sam could push the envelope, they decided to find out if they could actually use it defensively. Introducing the Nike Hercules, originally designated the Sam A-25, later the MIM-14, was a surface-to-air air defense system. So for the first time ever, the world figured out that the best offense is a good defense, especially if that defense has nuclear capability. Let's go on. The Nike Hercules was originally just an upgrade to the MIM-3 Nike Ajax, which now boasted four boosters instead of one. So right around the time the Cold War started becoming a big thing, the U.S. government ran into a problem. They realized that Soviet Russia had more bombers than they had missiles to shoot down. Their solution was one missile, all the bombers at once. The Nike Hercules program began development in 1958, and it stayed in service as the U.S.'s heavy air defense artillery until 1980, when it was replaced by MIM-104 Patriot. At its peak, the Nike Hercules was deployed to over 130 locations in the United States alone. These missiles are massive. They weigh over 10,000 pounds apiece and are about 41 feet long. Now, the Nike Hercules could be outfitted with conventional munitions, like a proximity fuse, fragmentation, or high explosive. But more often than not, they were actually outfitted with either a 2.5 or a 28 kiloton nuclear warhead. That's a lot of pain. That kind of boom boom you want far enough away from you. These things had an operational range of up to 90 miles with a flight ceiling of 100,000 feet. They also get there pretty quick, boasting Mach 4 speeds at 4,900 kilometers an hour, or if you have your flag on the moon, 3,045 miles per hour. You see all those planes over there? I want all of them deleted. This is also a friendly reminder that the U.S. was hitting hypersonic speeds with their air defense systems in 1958. Suck that, Russian fanboys. Because no one brings the pain like the USA. Was that a shameless merch plug? Yes, it was. Keep in mind the U.S. is also the country that brought you the heat-seeking missile, the knife missile, and now the nuke missile. So naturally, the United States wants to keep these things as safe as humanly possible. There was a series of keys and safeties and locks, and once you were ready to go, it didn't take long to send these things. About 36 seconds from detection to launch to send a nuke at Mach 4. In 1958, we could send a nuke at Mach 4 in 36 seconds. Why are we scared of other countries? I just, I just really want to know. Now, unlike other missile defense systems that the United States has, the Nike Hercules also boasted a surface-to-surface -surface mode, just in case the enemy didn't have any planes left and the air defenders wanted to send a country back to factory settings. Now, the Nike program is not without its problems. It did have two accidental launches, one of which was in Okinawa, the other one was in Korea. The one in Okinawa actually killed two people and ended up blasting through a fence and then skipping across the ocean. I'm not really sure if they ever actually recovered that warhead. It did have a nuclear payload on board. Anyways, the Nike Hercules will live in infamy as my favorite air defense system that has ever been designed by any country ever, because it answers a lot of very important questions like, why the fuck not? Don't forget to pick you up some sweet HLC merch, merch link in bio. As always, do not give in to the 22 a day. Every single one of you are amazing, and I will see you guys right here next time. Play me out!